Ah, this is Brooklyn. St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going in once again. We got a question uh, in regards to chemical analysis test kits versus, you know, some type of electrical device, digital meters, which one makes sense, you know, and why. So that's what we're going to be touching on today. Keep the questions coming. You guys got some hot questions. This is another one here that's going to help you guys out. I know some of you guys have been wondering this. So that's what we're going to jump into right the heck now. So let's get into it right now. So this question here goes as follows. It says, hello, Brooklyn. I'm about to establish a commercial aquaponics. I'm wondering, is it better to invest in electronic test kits instead of chemical test kits? For example, I use optical dissolve oxygen meter. All right, so this is a hot question, fire question. It's something that's very important and it's something that a lot of people should be wondering about and should be considering and pondering. So. When it comes to testing the water quality parameters, I tell all my students that at the minimum, you should be testing pH, you know, water temperature, dissolved oxygen, carbon dioxide, um, water, uh, water hardness, alkalinity, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and electrical conductivity. Those are the things that you should be testing and should be keeping up to par with. Now, the thing is, when it comes to an electrical, you know, some type of electrical device to test these versus a chemical analysis, the majority of these don't have um, an electrical component to it to measure and to test. So by default, you're going to be using a chemical analysis for the vast majority of these. But some of these have the option of either, you know, just uh, some type of uh, electronic device or they have both. You can do a chemical analysis or you can you have the option of uh, running some type of electrical device um, to test that water quality parameter. So what you need to consider when you're when we go into it right now from those water quality parameters is you know how frequent you're going to be testing that parameter. That's going to go into play if it makes more sense to get a chemical analysis test kit or you know some type of electrical device because the electrical device is most you know most of the time is going to cost more. So you want to weigh your options when it comes to this. So the frequency that you're going to be testing it um, is something that's uh, very, very important. And if it doesn't have an, uh, another option, some of them don't have any other option other than an electrical device. So that's all you're pretty much going to be left with. So pH is one of the um, water parameters that you have the option of doing a chemical analysis or some type of electrical device. Now with the chemical, analysis you can you some of you guys have the api test kits you know those are primarily used for you know ammonia the nitrite and the nitrate but they have a ph option in there as well now with that you could use it but i'm not a fan of using that i don't really like using any type of chemical analysis when it comes to ph because i like exact measurements for the ph like for example i have here on the test kit you might be able to see it jumps from a pH of 6, let me see if you can see it, and then it goes down to 6.4. In between there, 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, you won't really know what your pH is when you use that. And a, a jump from 6 to 6.4, that's a significant, significant change in pH. And me, I need to know that. I want to know where my pH stands. So I'm not going to go with any type of chemical analysis per se when it comes to that, at least not an API test kit, right? That doesn't work for me. So I go with a digital, you know, a digital um, a testing instrument. I use a blue lab meter for that, which will measure the pH and give me an exact measurement, you know? So that's what you have to, pretty much what you're working with there. So I would recommend in that instance for pH, always go with some type of, you know, electronic device in that circumstance. Now, water temperature, that's one of the, um, one of the parameters where you really don't have an option other than using something that's, you know, electronic. I mean, you can use like a thermometer that they use for fish tanks and that could work. That could work. 
you know, you, you can, they're the ones that they stick on the, you know, the fish tank glass and you can, you, you see it, it has that little red line that shows you the temperature. You can use that, that's fine. Me, it's already hooked up to the, um, the monitor that I have. So I just read my water temperature off of that and I, you know, get a digital reading. Also with dissolved oxygen, um, you have more options with that as well. The dissolved oxygen meter that I have, because I use a meter, it also runs water temperature on that. So I'm going to go with, you know, electronic options for that. But with dissolved oxygen, which is something that must be measured, right? You got a you know, chemical analysis, which I used to use back in the day, right? You can use that if you have a relatively low stocking density where, you know, oxygen is really not going to be something that is, you know, that you're worried about. I'm talking about really low stocking density, one pound per 10 gallons, something low like that, where oxygen, you, you know, if you have good enough aeration, you're probably not going to be worried about that. You can go with that because you might not be testing it that frequently. That's the key when it comes to the dissolve, the, uh, dissolve oxygen. But, you know, those test kits, it still takes a little bit of um, a work when you're, when you're putting that test kit together and you're checking your chemical analysis when it comes to uh, testing your oxygen. But as you start increasing that stocking density, that fish stocking density, you know, at least, uh, you know, a quarter pound per gallon, going up to, you know, a one third pound per gallon and up to a half pound per gallon, you're probably going to be wanting to look into something that's electronic, a digital type of um, uh, dissolved oxygen meter, because you're going to be testing it more frequently and you are probably not going to have time, at least for me, I don't have time to be running tests and, and mixing chemicals together like that. If I don't have the, you know, if I have another option. That's just how I look at it. If I have another option that's going to get it done right away, and I know I got to test frequently, you know, when it comes to dissolved oxygen, I'm testing quite frequently in the fish tank, going into the raft, even in the sump tank. Like, I'll make tests, so it's saving more time. It makes sense for me to go ahead and spend the money to get that, right? So that's something that you really have to consider. And you said it's for a commercial operation, so you might not, you really might not have time to be sitting there playing around with a chemical analysis when you really want your tests right then and right, you know, right then and there. So that's something to think about when dealing with dissolved oxygen. Um, another one is iron. Iron, you have, you know, you have your chemical analysis where you can, you know, test it kind of like looking on here. You can, you know, you run your analysis and you can match the colors up. You have that option. Me, I use kind of like a hybrid. It still is a mixture of a chemical analysis because you have to add some reagent in there and but I use a HANA test kit still got to add reagent in there so it's like a hybrid of a you know a, a chemical and you know an electronic device but I just add my reagent in there do what I have to do uh, press the button and let it do its reading and then I get my digital reading so with that it's kind of fair game I really just don't like the color readings if I have the option I'll go with the digital readings that's me personally so that's something to think about as well Electrical conductivity, that's another water quality parameter that you should be measuring. That'll give you an idea, on, uh, idea of the nutrient concentration in your system, right? And that's very important. That, you really don't have an option. From what I've seen, there's always some type of sneaky method out there that might be out there, you know, uh, in the cut somewhere where no one knows about how to measure electrical conductivity without using a meter but for the most part you're going to find it being measured using a meter so go and get you a meter when it comes to electrical conductivity that's what you're going to be working with so that's pretty much those are the the the, the water quality parameters that can be measured using you know a, um some type of electronic device but you have the option of a chemical analysis as well you just have to sit down and think and find out which one works best for you and which one makes sense for your circumstance. Something for you to think about. So let's continue on and see what else we got in here um, with this question. So it also says, also I see your DWC has aeration on the side. Is it okay to put it on the side instead of the middle? So he's asking about the aeration, the diffused aeration inside of the raft bed. Um, I think you've seen a video, maybe I've opened up the raft and you've seen 
the aeration placed on the side. But that's not the only place where it's put in the raft. I have it staggered. It's staggered and it's evenly spaced out. So it's, it's on the sides, but it's also in the middle coming towards the ends. You know, it might, and it's in the middle uh, on the, the front end over here as well. So it's staggered and it's important to have it staggered in your raft. You don't want to just have it in the side or just have it in the middle. You want to have it kind of spaced out evenly because what those uh, this diffusers are doing is they're allowing when the water that comes in and it's allowing the water to mix the nutrients to mix the dissolved oxygen to mix so all the plant roots can come in contact with the full um, nutrient you know availability that's in there and that comes into the raft so it's important to have those things spaced out nice and evenly you know so you don't have pockets where there's low dissolved oxygen or there's low nutrient concentration so they're kind of turning the water for you so that's how you want to look at that when you space it out so not just on the sides or not just in the middle space those things out evenly all right hopefully that helps in that area let's continue on um, it says also if you grow lettuce and if the floating raft moves around a bit is it okay thanks so when we're dealing with the floating raft you're asking if it moves around a bit and you have lettuce growing on it is it okay if you have your system you know, the, the polystyrene or whatever you're using to, to, for the floating raft, if it's fully stocked, you're not going to be having your, your lettuce moving around. You know, as far as the, the, the floating raft moving around, I think that's my, that might be what you're talking about. Excuse me. So it's kind of just stuck in place. So it's not doing any moving around. But say if I move, you know, the front end here, I take it out and it's empty space here where now it gives an opportunity for the back row to move and drift this way back and forth, that's fine. That's not gonna do anything. That's one of the benefits of doing aquaponics. I can move, I could take uh, this cup out here, I could show you real quick. I could take, say this right here, this is some, some lemon balm. I could take this out right here, I could move it here. I could take it out, I could put it here. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. That's the point and the importance of having your aeration in there spaced out so the nutrient, nutrients and, and the oxygen is being mixed together. So it really doesn't matter where I put it at. So if your lettuce moves around, if you, you know, you're missing some, some, some floating rafts and your lettuce board just happens to float up a little bit, doesn't matter. That's the thing about aquaponics. We can play with it. We can move things around. It's not like the dirt farming where once you plant it in there, it's stuck and it's grounded and if you take it out then you're gonna have problems so we can move this thing around I might I move things around all the time I might just feel like taking it here and say you know what I'd rather have it back there it makes more sense on how I'm doing my diagram for my um, for my grow out how I want it to want it to be so I move it around often so that's not a big problem right so hopefully that has helped you out and has helped everyone else out that's listening hopefully that's giving you some insight uh, you know how this thing how this thing goes so if any of you guys have other questions be sure to leave those things in the comment section below I love the questions that you guys bring y'all bring some hot content some hot fire and it just allows everyone else to see you know the details of aquaponics the little details and the you know the things that are might be small but they matter right so it helps bring that out with the questions that you guys ask so keep going it. I appreciate you guys for liking, subscribing to the channel. Fire keeps me going, keeps me motivated, and I definitely appreciate it. For you guys out there that's looking for more, you can click on the link below, get you a free aquaponic starter guide. Get in there in the School of Aquaponics, get your free um, aquaponic course. Get in there and, um, and enjoy that. You're gonna absolutely love it. There's also paid courses at the School of Aquaponics. Go to the theschoolofaquaponics.com paid courses aquaponics paradise break down a lot of things in there the fundamentals the core fundamentals of aquaponics that will help you out tremendously once you get the fundamentals down you're in the game then that's when you can start figuring out the little details that might hit for you details that you know that may work for you or that you discover right but the, you got to get the core down right the core down first right so hopefully that helps you guys out man 
and I look forward to more content from you guys, more questions. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car.